Now, we have the concept of permutation formula. It's a very interesting way of deriving the permutation formula. Now, how we get it? So, suppose, let's take an example. You're selecting three items out of nine terms. You're, or you're selecting three books out of nine. You need to select any three out of nine given books. So, you first select the first one. So, which is going to be nine, nine ways you can select it. Then you select the next book because out of the nine, one has been selected. So, the remaining are eight. So, you can select the second book in eight different ways. Then comes to the last book, the number of books left are seven. So, you select them in seven different ways. So, the number of ways you select them would be nine into eight into seven. So basically, you are basically selecting them in so many different ways, that is 9, 8, 7, and which is meaning you're selecting. Now what is selecting? You're picking up order. In this case, it also involves the order. Which book are you picking up is also important. Whether you're picking up book number A, book number B, or whatever it is, that is very important. Now suppose you multiply this further by 6. So this is basically, it's a permutation because you're selecting and the order in which you're selecting is important. So now NPR, this NPR means this is the same as, it's like telling 9P3. 9P3 actually means you're selecting 9P3, which means you're selecting 3 out of 9 and arranging them. So you could select the first book you could ever sell, select book number one or book number two or book number three and you arranged it in a particular way. Then you are selecting the remaining. Now which one you are selecting and arranging will change the order. So you choose, So it's basically an arrangement of things. You are selecting and arranging them on a shelf. So you are going to arrange them accordingly. So the nine ways in which you can select and arrange. Similarly, now suppose you multiply this by all these numbers into 2 into 1. Now since you are, remember this is 9p3, you are multiplied all these by this number. So the value of 9 into 8 into 7 has changed. So to nullify the effect, you also have to divide 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2. We can do away with the 1. So basically what you have done, this still remains 9 into 8 into 7, which is n 9p3, that is 3 have been selected and arranged in 9 into 8 into 7 ways. And then what we have done is we have multiplied by 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and also divided. So the, this whole thing is still 9p3. But what has happened? This is 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Now this is reducing by 1. So obviously this is 9 factorial and this is 6 factorial. Now, 6 factorial is nothing but 9 minus 3 factorial. So, if you see this 9 and this 3, so basically 9p3 is 9 factorial upon 9 minus 3 factorial. So, in short, if you generalize this, if you have npr, it is going to be like in this case there is 9, it is going to be n factorial upon n minus r. Factorial. So this is how we have the derivation of this formula. Just understand that this is not just selection. Let me further clarify the question. You are picking out three books out of nine and arranging them on a shelf. So which book you pick up first is important. So the first book can be picked up in nine ways and arranged at the first position. Then the remaining eight books, which one you pick up and arrange? In the second position, the order is important, into 7. So basically, 9p3 is 9 into 8 into 7. That is permutation of 3 objects picked out of a total of 9, which is the same as multiplying the numerator and denominator by 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Now, since the value is not changed, now this alone is 9 factorial. This is nothing but 6 factorial, 6 is nothing but 9 minus 3. So eventually if this is n and 3 is r, npr is n factorial by 
n minus r factorial. This is the formula for permutation. This is how we can derive the formula for permutation. Okay, so we have this is the way you have the formula. Now let's see how we can apply this formula. So it's a simple formula which should almost get into your the deepest recesses of your mind so that we can apply it the just snap of a finger. Okay. All right. Now we have a case wherein in how many ways three letter words can be formed using the letters. Now if you're using the concept of NPR, we have to pick up three letters out of six. So it's a simple case of NPR that is 63 ways which is nothing but 6 factorial upon 6 minus 3 factorial, which will be 6 into 5 into 4. And we can just write 3 factorial upon 3 factorial. So this gets cancelled. So it is 120 ways in which we can select first and then select 3 first and then arrange them to form different type of words in this. Okay. Okay, now we have a question. In NPR, N is always what? N is what? Is it an integer? Is it a fraction? Is it a positive integer? Or none of this. Now, it cannot, when you say integer, it could also mean 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, which it is not. N is a number of terms, and hence it cannot be integer. It cannot be a fraction, because number of terms can never be a fraction. Yes, it is a positive integer. So, N, the total number of N stands for the total number of items out of which we need to select R number. So it is going to be a positive integer. And yes, we do have it as a positive integer. Okay, then we have NPR. The restriction on N and R is that N should always be greater than R, which means the number of items that you select out of the total number should always be less than the total number of items given, need not be. You may select, suppose you have been given A, B, C, D, E and you need to select and arrange all five. All five, there are various ways of arranging it. So definitely N is not greater than R. N is not less than R because and the total number of items cannot be less than the number that is selected. So this is out of question. This is out of question. Yes, n is either greater than r or it could be even equal to r. So that means the total number of items given is greater than or equal to the number of items that you have picked up to arrange. So n is greater than or equal to r is the restriction that we have here. Yes, and then we have, now let's see this. 4P3 is evaluated as what? So what is 4P3? 4P3 we know is 4 factorial, that is n factorial, upon n minus r factorial, that is 4 minus 3 factorial. It should be remembered, this is not the same as 4 factorial minus 3 factorial, which is 4 factorial upon 1 factorial. 1 factorial is nothing but 1 and this 4 factorial is 4 into 3 into 2. We need not have to write 1 anymore. So which turns out to be 24. So 4P3 actually means 24. So among these, this is the right answer. And yes, we do have it.